the drop off, the graduation ceremony was held in the Beecher Prep Upper School Auditorium. It was only about a 15 minute walk from our house to the other campus building, but dad drove me because I was all dressed up and had on new shiny black shoes that weren't broken in yet, and I didn't want my feet to hurt. Students were supposed to arrive at the auditorium an hour before the ceremony started, but we got there even earlier, so we sat in the car and waited. Dad turned on the CV player and our favorite song came on. We both smiled and started bobbing our heads to the music. Dad sang along to the song. Andy would ride his bicycle across the town to bring you candy. Hey, is my tie on straight, I said. He looked and straightened it a tiny bit as he kept singing. Does my hair look okay, I said. He smiled and nodded. Perfect, he said. You look great, Augie. Vias put some gel in it this morning, I said, pulling down the sun visor, visor and looking in the little mirror. It doesn't look too puffy. No, it's very cool, Augie. I don't think you've ever had it this short before, have you? No, I got it cut yesterday. I think it makes me look more grown up, don't you? Definitely. He was smiling, looking at me and nodding. Look at you, Augie, he said, smiling from ear to ear. Look at you, looking so grown up and spiffy. I can't believe you're graduating the fifth grade. I know, it's pretty awesome, right? I nodded. It feels just like yesterday that you started. Remember I still had that Star Wars braid hanging from the back of my head? Oh gosh, that's right, he said, rubbing his palm over his forehead. You hated that braid, didn't you, Dad? Hate is too strong of a word, but I definitely didn't love it. You hated it. Come on, admit it, I teased. No, I didn't hate it, he smiled, shaking his head. But I will admit to hating that astronaut helmet you used to wear. Do you remember? The one that Miranda gave me? Of course I remember. I used to wear that thing around all the time. Good God, I hated that thing. He laughed almost too mo almost more to himself. I was so bummed when it got lost, I said. Oh, it didn't get lost, he answered casually. I threw it out. Wait, what? I said. Honestly, I didn't think I heard him right. He was singing again. Dad, I said, turning down the volume. What? You threw it out? He finally looked at my face and saw how mad I was. I couldn't believe he was being so matter of fact about the whole thing. I mean, to me, this was a major revolution, but to him, he was acting like it was no big deal. Augie, I couldn't stand seeing that thing cover your face anymore. Dad, I loved that helmet. It meant a lot to me. I was bummed beyond belief when it got lost. Don't you remember? Oh, I remember, Augie, he said softly. Oh, Augie, don't be mad. I'm sorry. I just couldn't see you, couldn't stand to see you wear that thing in your head anymore, you know? I didn't think it was good for you. He was trying to look me in the eye, but I wouldn't look at him. Come on, Augie, please try to understand, he continued, putting his hand under my chin and tilting my face to him. You were wearing that helmet all the time, and the real, real truth is, I missed seeing your face, Augie. I know you don't always love it, but you have to understand, I love it. I love this face of yours, Augie, completely and passionately, and it kind of broke my heart that you were always covering it up. He was squinting at me like he really wanted to understand. Does mom know? I said. Oh, gosh, no. Are you kidding? She would have killed me. She tore the place apart looking for that helmet, Dad, I said. I mean, she spent like a whole week looking for it in every closet, in the laundry room, everywhere. I know, he said, nodding. That's why she'd kill me. And then he looked about me, looked at me, and something about his expression started to make me laugh, which made him open his mouth wide like he just realized, realized something. Wait a minute, Augie, he said, pointing his finger at me. You have to promise me you will never tell Mom anything about this. I smiled and rubbed my palms together like I was about to get very greedy. Let's see, I said, stroking my chin. I'll be wanting that new Xbox when it comes out next month, and I'll definitely be wanting my own car in about six years. A red Porsche would be nice, and he started laughing. I love it when I'm the one who makes Dad laugh, since he's usually the funny man that gets everyone else laughing. Oh boy, oh boy, he said, shaking his head. You really have grown up. The part of the song we both loved to sing started to play, so I turned up the volume and we started singing. We sang this last part at the top of our lungs, trying to hold that last note as long as the guy who sang that song, which always made us crack up. While we were laughing, we noticed Jack had arrived and was walking over to our car. I started to get out. Hold on, said Dad. I just want to make sure you've forgiven me, okay? Yes, I forgive you. He looked at me gratefully. Thank you. But don't ever throw anything else of mine ever out again. Promise me? I promise. I opened the door and got out as Jack reached the car. Hey, Jack, I said. Hey, Augie. Hey, Mr. Pullman, said Jack. How you doing, Jack? Said Dad. See you later, Dad, I said, closing the door. Good luck, guys, Dad called out, rolling down the front window. See you guys on the other side of fifth grade. We waved as, we, as he turned on the ignition and started to pull away, but then I ran over and stopped the car. I put my head on the window so Jack wouldn't hear what I was saying. Can you guys, like, not kiss me a lot after graduation, I asked. It's really kind of embarrassing. I'll try my best. 
Tell mom too. I don't think she'll be able to resist Augie, but I'll pass it along. Bye, dear old dad. He smiled. Bye, my son. 